Hello, everybody, and thanks for joining us on the second episode of the Pave It Forward podcast. My name is Phil Metzger, and with me is Kevin Gray, and we are here to help leaders in the paving industry who are looking to run more efficiently, meet their ideal customer, and improve the lives of those around them through meaningful work. Kevin, how are you doing today? Man, as uh, as always, I'm doing fantastic. Uh, any Anytime uh, we are together on this stage uh, with an opportunity to, you know, not only talk with you, my friend, but to talk to all of our listeners and, and be able to share and, you know, share, you know, the things that we are so passionate about, man, it's, it's always good to be here. So yeah. How you feeling? Doing great. It, uh, how you feeling after uh, that first episode? I'm feeling really good after that first episode. I've, I've played it back several times and I'm, uh, really proud of of the message we were able to deliver. Uh, we, you know, there was there was a lot of energy there, so um, I, I feel good. I, f- I feel like uh, we were able to kind of set the intention uh, on what we are trying to accomplish with this mission, with this Pave It Forward mission, and uh, you know, lay lay the groundwork, lay the foundation of who we are, what we are, and what we're trying to do. Um, it was laid out there, so I'm, I'm feeling good, man. I'm, I'm I cannot wait, cannot wait to continue to build upon that and uh, in, in the upcoming weeks. So fire it up, dude. Heck yeah, me too. Uh, I just want to quickly tell the listeners what exactly this show will be. Uh, we're going to be a weekly podcast that we're looking to release on Wednesdays or Thursdays, and we will be on all major platforms soon enough. So go ahead and subscribe if you're listening on one of those. And if not, um, if you're listening on another platform or something, please check back soon. Uh, we have the podcast submitted and everything like that, so it should be uh, within the next week or so here. By the time this one comes out, hopefully you're listening to it on your favorite platform. Uh, you can also find us on LinkedIn, YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook. Um, for right now, though, why don't you head over to uh, at underscore pave it forward on Instagram. That's at underscore pave it forward, all one word. Um, for this episode and the next two episodes, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about, for this episode, operations within the paving industry. And then over the next two, we'll do culture and marketing. And then from then on, what we're going to do is kind of dive deeper into each of those topics, asking kind of specific questions that a lot of paving owners and uh, people that are looking to get into the paving industry have. Uh, We have a lot of different sources for those questions, and we're really looking forward to diving in. So today's topic is operations. Um, And what we're going to do is I'm going to go back with Kevin and kind of ask him some of the big questions that I could notice through the people that are reaching out to us as far as they're looking for solutions uh, through Kevin. So I thought we'd go ahead and bring some of those questions up and see how Kevin answers them. Uh, Kevin's owned a paving company for 10 years. And though he came in, he purchased the company uh, from his, what was your wife's aunt, correct? Yes. Wife's aunt, aunt and uncle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so uh, he came in with, from the investment side, but um, I know he's gotten to know, uh, it's got to be up in the, the, the hundreds now of, of people that are within the industry that have had different situations. But the first one I want to start you off with, Kev, uh, if you decided you wanted to start a paving or seal coat company and had zero capital, how would you choose to start your entrepreneurial, entrepreneurial journey? Um, what would be the, the kind of the pros and cons versus uh, starting with seal coating and maybe working your way to paving or trying a different method? Well, I, you know, it's uh, this, I mean, let's, let's, let's face it. You know, when you, you get into uh, uh, the pavement industry as a whole, I mean, there, especially if, if you, you know, want to want to want to do things, you know, correctly. And, you know, you're talking about investing in the you know, right kind of equipment, proper equipment, um, you know, tools of the trade to be able to, you know, deliver quality, products to these consumers who you are giving your word to um it i mean it can be a very expensive you know capital heavy uh, industry to get into it's uh, certainly on the paving side it's it's not one that uh, you're you're going to you know wake up one day and say hey we're going to i'm going to be in the, i'm going to be in the asphalt paving business and right. because uh, to legitimately be in the asphalt paving business you're talking you know at least a dump truck. Uh, now you can always rent or lease out dump trucks, but you know, you need, you need a trailer, uh, trailer or two. Um, you need a paver, you need a roller. 
probably a skid steer, at least a wheelbarrow to start, uh, you know, rakes, shovels, um, stuff like that. I mean, you're talking, you know, at, at minimum, I'd say you're even with, with very used, uh, worn out equipment, you're probably at least, oh gosh, I don't know, $50,000 to legitimately put yourself in the paving, uh, in business, uh, I would imagine. So it's, you know, it's, it's cost heavy on the, on the front end. It's capital heavy on the front end, uh, seal, seal coating. You can certainly get into that, you know, much more, uh, uh, much more effectively and easily, uh, yeah, you you literally just need a way to to get around from job to job. You can you can even start with just you know pails or buckets of sealer and uh, yourself and a couple you know brushes, brooms, squeegee, however you want to you know apply the sealer. So I mean, uh, you can get into the seal coating game you know with a <clears throat> geez a couple hundred dollar trip to Lowe's honestly, um, uh, or you know a couple hundred dollars to your nearest you know seal coating distri distribution center. Um, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of guys, a lot of, a lot of the smaller guys we see around town that, um, we'll call them, we'll call them gypsies because everybody uh, that's listening to this kind of understands what we're talking about. That doesn't mean that if you, if you, you know, choose to start this way, because you have to, because of financial restrictions that we will categorize you into that, uh, in with those folks. But, you know, a lot of, the, a lot of those guys, they've got a, you know, a couple hundred, a couple hundred gallon plastic tote in the back of a pickup truck that they'll take to their uh, local uh, seal coat distribution center and they'll get, uh, you know, 100, 100 gallons, 100 gallons of sealer that probably cost you two, 300 bucks. Uh, depending what market you're in, you can probably get uh, a, a broom or brush for, you know, maybe a couple of them for 50 bucks or less. And then um, you need a weed eater and a blower. Um, gasoline some two cycle engine oil and you're you're pretty much in business man you just you just need the customers at that point uh <clears throat> to get the ball rolling man and it's um you know it's pro probably going to start you're probably not going to have any money for advertising or marketing anything like that so it's it gets uh it's a very much door to door you know knocking on doors trying to convince people that they need to have the driveway seal coated the the number one thing I can, I can, um, that, that costs you zero money that costs you zero ca capital investment, uh, would be to get on YouTube or to get, um, uh, or to get on Instagram and reach out to somebody right. like myself or anyone within the industry and start asking questions. And, uh, you know, before you go get that first load of sealer at your distribution center or go to Lowe's and get five gallon pails of sealer, um, actually learn you know, what the hell you're doing or, or learn as much as you can without actually having, you know, apply the product yourself so that when you're knocking on uh, Mr. And Mrs. Smith's door, you don't, you don't look like a scam artist that you don't look like, sure. uh, you know, you don't, you don't look like you're out to get their money. You actually, you know, know what you're talking about. You know, the product that's actually that you're carrying around in your truck, you know, how to apply it, you know, uh, the prep that's involved with getting the, the pavement surface clean enough to actually put the seal coat down upon, uh, because, because one thing is going to ruin you quicker you know, if you're just getting, especially if you're just getting started, um, you do your first two, three, four, five, ten 10 jobs. And, um, either, either you put too much water in your mix. So the first time it rains, that sealer has gone, or you didn't get the driveway clean enough, uh, and it didn't stick. So the first time it rains, the sealer has gone. It won't take long for those you know, people in those neighborhoods to say, "Hey, watch out for watch out for that guy in that red pickup truck that's knocking on doors, mm -hmm. uh, pretending to tell you he knows what he's doing uh, and taking you know two hundred fifty three hundred dollars of your hard earned money." Um, so, so what you can do at zero cost to yourself, except for your time, which when you're getting started off, um, your time is all you got. You know, invest mm -hmm. in your invest in your time, invest in yourself. Do the research, do your homework, uh, reach out to industry professionals, get on YouTube. Uh, any, you know, if you get, if you got a buddy or even your own driveway or your mom and dad's house, whatever, go practice on their stuff first. You know, make sure, make sure you you actually kind of know what you're doing before you go out there and present to people that you are in the seal coating business, right? Sure. So, sure. Um, yeah. And the, the reason I that, bring all this that up would be my advice. 
Yeah, sorry. Just a little bit of a delay. But um, good. the reason I the reason I brought it up is because, you know, this is about asphalt paving, but there have been quite a few people now that have reached out and you've been able to to kind of really help them kind of not kind of make that transition from a seal coat company to a paving company. And I'm not saying that that should be the goal ever um, is to make that transition. Yeah. But since you already are under are in that realm and people understand what how to preserve the pavement and everything, uh, if you can afford to to make that next step, I think it, it's kind of logical and it's also an opportunity to make a little bit more money and, uh, you know, affect a few more people's lives um, by hiring and, and getting in there to, to actually put the surface down. Absolutely. Yeah. To get into the paving game, you're saying? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, one, and that, you know, like I said, I mean, that's going to, to get into the paving game, that is going to take, it's going to take some capital. Um, chances are, if, you know, if you're just getting started or if you're young or if you're, you know, just establishing a, a business, um, it's going to be very difficult unless you have a very good relationship you know, with your bank to walk in there and say, um, you know, Hey, I need to borrow, I need to borrow a quarter million bucks to buy all this payment equipment. Um, not to say that it's impossible, uh, but, but you better have a darn good business plan. You better have, uh, you better have a bunch of customers lined up all around. And I would say that's probably the most important thing as you take that leap either in directly into the paving business or you start to take that leap <clears throat> from the seal coating business into an asphalt paving pavement maintenance operation uh, is to make sure you've got a customer base lined up that's going to actually help you pay, you know, pay for the stuff you just bought, right? Like it's, it's going to be very unlikely that you're going to come up with, you know, just have 50 to hundred thousand dollars sitting around to, to put yourself in business. So either a, you're going to have to go borrow it from a bank uh, like, like I did. Now, fortunate enough, I was, uh, able to purchase a an already established company um, right. for you know took out a hundred twenty five thousand dollar loan and uh, we bought a, a worn out pucket paver we bought four single axle dump trucks that were basically falling apart uh, trailers that were falling apart uh, we bought a uh, included a grade tractor that had a, a bucket on the front and a grade box on the back. Uh, a one and a quarter ton stone wolf pack roller. Um, it smoked pretty heavily when we bought it <clears throat> and then, um, a crew full of, of drug, drug addicts and drunks. So, you know, <laughs> well, Hey, well, we're in business. Speaking of that, speaking of that, how, how many, how many employees do you need to start with? Okay. Let's say, uh, you start with the wheelbarrow approach and you get, you get some decent used equipment. Uh, what, what's your crew look like to start off with? And, and typically, you know, if you're going to, if you're, you know, transition into this paving uh, asphalt side of things, you know, you're pro probably looking at um, patchwork kind of stuff, you know, pothole filling. Um, by the way, if you're pothole filling, one thing you can do to separate yourself from everybody else is take a little extra time and, you know, you got, you got your hole. Um, maybe go to the pawn shop or something and find you a good you or home depot you know off the rental fleet or to a rental place uh even you know rent rent you a, a concrete saw and actually you know to get that word of mouth going for you say hey this guy didn't just come slop some mix in our potholes he actually you know went to the outer perimeter of the of the circle of the hole and cut you know cut a straight line and then um, you make a square and, and if you, you make a square there for those potholes you're filling, uh, you got something for that asphalt to lock into. So, right. So it's gonna, huh. instead of just sitting in that hole and being able to be pushed out by, you know, a, a car driving over it, you're actually giving them something that's done proper and is, is actually going to last. So, yeah. you know, this guy charged the same amount of money, yeah, maybe a little more to fill my potholes, but he actually did it right. And it lasts three years instead of three weeks right sure <clears throat> so yeah not that, only that. that's that's some good advice too is like do do things the right way from the get-go uh don't try to cut corners especially right out of the gate uh because it's gonna bite you in the ass pretty quick uh, by reputation right so right take take the time to understand what proper construction looks like and do that from the get-go uh, but you're probably i mean 
you know, you, you were talking about just doing some patching and stuff to start. I mean, you can, I mean, some of that, some of that stuff you can almost do by yourself. I mean, um, you, you get into, and there's a lot of guys, even when they're getting started that are, that'll do, um, 10 to 15, maybe even 20 ton driveways by hand, you know, they'll, hmm. <clears throat> you can, you know, you can get the material. You don't even have to own a dump truck necessarily. You can get the material delivered to you, um, you know, from the plant, uh, get a lease truck, bring you a, you know, 10 ton load of blacktop and just have them, um, you know, dump it out uh, kind of in piles or into your wheel. You know, if they've got a coal chute on the back, you know, dump it into your wheelbarrow and you just kind of start hand spreading the, uh, the blacktop over the surface of the driveway and you're raking it and you're rolling. And now you get into stuff like that. You probably, uh, you're probably going to want at least three men. I would imagine you're going to want a couple guys on the ground, you know, doing the raking, doing the finishing, uh, delivering the material from the truck, uh, to the area of the driveway you're working in, <clears throat> excuse me. Sure. Uh, and then some, you know, especially if you're doing it by hand and you're, and it's going to be a little, uh, the texture is going to be a little rougher because you're, you're hand raking it instead of screed applying it. You're going to want somebody on the, on the compaction uh, team on it pretty quick. And you can, uh, you know, you, you can even start with just a plate compactor. Uh, you don't necessarily have to have a roller, you know, ideally you have a roller, but I mean, there's, there are more than one ways to skin a cat. We've got a guy on our crew that does, <clears throat> who does some work on the side that doesn't have, um, you know, doesn't have a paver, doesn't have a mm -hmm. roller. Uh, and he'll go out with it. And he's, he's very talented on a rake, very talented, um, you know, asphalt technician. Sure. So he'll go out and he'll, he, I've seen him do, I mean, he's showing me a video of a 20 ton driveway that he did by hand, him and a couple wow. of guys, you know, they're doing, they're probably doing 10 by 10, you know, kind of one ton sections at a time, piecing it together, you know, laying it out raking it and they're just they're rolling it they're finishing it with just a, a vibratory plate and it i mean if you know what you're doing um it can look really good if you don't know what you're doing uh it's gonna look absolutely awful and that customer's not gonna give you any money so yeah. i mean it's gonna look it's gonna look really bad um or it's you know it's gonna look halfway decent even with very little to no equipment per se sure so Sounds like there's quite a biggest few. thing to do is is learn what you're doing before you actually go out and try to tell people you know what you're doing. Sure, sure. Yeah, I just want to add something that I notice um, <clears throat> from the I guess the marketing side of things, and I can only imagine <clears throat> as a customer. But if you're doing uh, the pothole filling and cutting and all that stuff as well, if you have a way to clean up after yourself, to where as soon as you're done, people aren't mm. driving off, and the person that just paid you now has stuff all over their car. Uh, I imagine that goes a long way too, especially once getting with getting your name out there and starting a good brand. If you're going to choose to actually try to build a company that lasts. That's a great point. Like, I mean, how, how are you leaving, how are you leaving that, that job site or that customer's property when you're done? Right. Like, yeah. Um, it, it's a shame, but most people that are small are just starting out or, you know, in, in a hurry to make money or, and, or cutting corners, um, they're usually leaving that property a, a darn mess too, because like, oh, it, you know, the rain will wash it away or, or they'll, or they'll, or they'll tell their customer while they're asking them for the money. They're like, well, this is just part of it. You know, this is a dirty sure. job. I'm like, no, that's bullshit. Like yeah. take care of your customer. Yeah, man. Especially you know, it's, it's easier now than ever. Room. It's easier now than ever to have yeah. and ruin a reputation. So, um, start. yeah start yeah. smart the one uh, star reviews are very easy to uh, to give out yeah and for and the whole world to see they hurt the five stars <laughs> a lot more than an additional five star will um i will get 100 percent. yeah i will get to the office side of things but i want to ask one more thing about the field and that is some of your key takeaways from uh the first couple of years because uh, even though you purchased the company you spent a ton of time in the field um throughout your career with adc but um, what was it like making your first hires and then what have you learned, uh, kind of about hiring for the field? Oh man, it's, um, <clears throat> man, back, back in the day, I mean, like I said, we, we had a, had a crew full of, of drunks and druggies, but, <laughs> but they knew blacktop. I mean, sure. uh, you know, when, when they were there, when they would show up for work or, uh, as, as long as they had their stuff, 
you know, and we're feeling good that day. Yeah. Uh, they are all right, but um, it, I've, I've had a massive, massive epiphany and shift uh, in the way I hire and fire, by the way. Huh. And I'd say, you know, just within the last, you know, handful of years, I've been, uh, and most people in the industry are because you've got, you've got to, you've told the customer you're, you're coming, that you're going to perform this work uh, and that you're going to do it well. So I think more times than not, we get in the predicament of we need to put seats and chairs and the seats are, you know, put, I'm sorry, put butts in chairs, put, gotcha. put people, yeah, yeah. you know, in the seats. Sure. Um, and, and that these people, they need to know what they're doing. So you gotta, I gotta have no matter what, no matter what baggage they may come with that we need people out there that know what they're doing. And a large part of that is because when I was starting out, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. So sure. these people were basically teaching me, right. Uh, had, had some very, very poor, uh, teachers, uh, by the way, w within my crews in the early years, yeah. um, not, not, not in their, not in their skill level or, or what they were doing with the blacktop, but just, but just otherwise. Uh, sure. The drug and, addicts and, and when you're doing that, good role models. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> and it's bad because you'll almost tolerate any of their uh, actions or, you know, detriments or, any, you know, anything they're doing that, you know, you normally wouldn't approve of or allow with your business. But if you let them go, then how are we going to work tomorrow? Right. Sure. How are we going to get anything done? So, um, but it, but it's changed drastically in the last, I don't know, I'd say you've been around, uh, three to four years. Um, it, you, we, we definitely, we're hiring, we're, we're hiring on 10 things that require zero talent. Like, I don't, we don't care if you've got any blacktop experience. Um, we want, we want you to be, we want you to be on time to work. We want you to be coachable. We want you to have a good attitude. We want you to have good ethics and morals, um, you know, things like that, things that the right kind of person, the, the qualities, uh, character traits, characteristics that they will possess because we can teach the rest. I mean, we're literally just in the business of transplanting rocks. It's not, it's not, uh, it's not, you know, life or death situations that we're involved with. So sure. We can get the right kind of people. We can teach, uh, we can teach you the rest. Um, but that, but that's, I mean, that's scary when you're, when you're new and you're starting out and you're, uh, maybe you're growing a little bit. It's like, man, I need some help. I need some help. But, and, that, and that's why I reference back, like it is so important. And this is where I probably failed myself in the early years was not, um, and, and even though I had some, you know, even though I had some great mentors and teachers, like I didn't, I didn't learn the processes. I didn't learn this, the standards and the techniques and the technical, the technical side of, um, you know, prep work, paving work, seal coating work. Uh, soon, you know, I learned that later rather like, that's the first thing, like you really, you as the owner or the leader, um, you have got to understand uh, the process. You've got to understand your product um, as fast as you can. And if one of the fastest ways to do that, and we offer this, um, we've had several people come uh, and visit us. I mean, we, you need to, you need to pick up the phone or get on Instagram or you know, find somebody you know, like ourselves that you can go, you know, go spend, go spend a month with them, you know, uh, before you start a business, go, sure. go uh, pay for your travel, uh, pay for your hotel room, uh, I don't care if it's thirty nine ninety nine a month. I mean, it, or a week, or a, a night, whatever. You know, whatever, whatever gets you in proximity, whatever gets you to that person where you can spend, you know, immerse yourself into their business, into their field, and learn as much as you possibly can, as quickly as you possibly can, so that you're not relying on other people, uh, other people's skill. Because a lot of times, you know, people that do have ex experience and and whatever, they bring a lot of their old baggage that they picked up from the other, um, other companies they've worked for that have had piss poor cultures, uh, teamwork and all that. And they bring it, they bring it to you. So sure. uh, and they may not know we want to hire people. Well, yeah. Yeah. But They're, you don't want to invite it. You know, it alls is what they are. Yeah. And it's, and it's, uh, it's very detrimental to the team and culture that you've established. When you let yeah. those people in your doors, 
uh, it's bad. I mean, we, we try to talk people out of coming to work for us. We say, look, it's, this is what our team looks like. These are, these are the 10 things that we're going to, we just did our year end reviews, um, employee reviews, and we did it uh, peer to peer style. We sat is basically, um, we're reviewing you, John, you sit in the middle of the room. Now I said literal, but we were all sitting in the same room and we all, you know, John sitting in the middle of the room, all of the rest of his crew and company, we're all sitting in the room with him. And we have those 10 things on the sheet, the 10 things that require zero talent. And we're going around the room and each person is grading uh, the person being reviewed on those 10 things. And it's given an opportunity to uh, be open and honest with them. Uh, it's, it's teaching accountability. It's teaching communication. It's, teaching trust um you know we um we, we were really pushing that so it's so let's uh, let's talk about that just a, a second more i have a question yeah. about that so it seems like the comments that are starting to come in uh from tiktok by the way are, are great just in the fact that you said please to one of your crew members and someone said this is the nicest yeah. paving crew i've ever <laughs> seen you know so when you yeah. have a room of 10 to 15 guys that 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 you say here you, now it's the spotlight's on you. Here are 10 things and we're going to grade, grade you on that. That seems like there's some potential for causing some friction or maybe not really addressing the things that need to be addressed since, you know, they're face to face, you know, normally I would think I'd come to the manager or, or you in that situation and say, Hey, this is a problem. What was that like in there and in the room with your employees and, and how did, how effective do you think it, it was? Um, I, I can wrap it up in one word. It was powerful. Hmm, nice. It was powerful. Um, it was, it was rewarding as the owner of this company, of the, of the owner of this company and the <clears throat> person who has been behind, um, basically working my tail off to create and establish a culture, um, that we all can believe in, that we all, believe in trust in rely on you know we rely on this culture uh, every day they come to work they rely on on the steadiness of the culture that it's you know, this is their safe place this is where they spend more time than they spend with their families um you know literally they spend right. more time you spend more time uh with your employer and with your fellow employees you know peers crew members than you are with your with your family it was absolutely um, it was powerful. I mean, there were, there were several moments and you can ask, you know, anybody here that, I mean, it literally brought me to emotion. Like it brought me to tears. There were, I mean, there were several people that were brought to emotions during that day. Um, wow. because, you know, not only were we able to share, uh, in the, you know, in the positive things and uh, the progress, uh, that a lot of these folks have made, but we were also able to have some very, uh, difficult conversations and share some hard truths and look each other like in the eye and and say hey brother it, you're great at this but man you you really need really need this and none of the, none none zero of the reviews uh that were done were done by myself or my senior vice president of operations like we had nothing to do with it. We didn't, we had zero, we had zero input until everyone in the room uh, had gone around and had a chance to talk about that person. And basically uh, all I would do is kind of summarize what everybody had talked about and maybe, <clears throat> you know, maybe, maybe added a, a, a little bit of input of my own, uh, you know, some, you know, gave some praises or gave some other areas of constructive criticism for that person. But it's, you know, it's, it, <clears throat> it was a room full of, uh, people that you could see that there is a brotherhood forming, that there is a fraternity, sorority, you know, uh, I'm talking men and women um, that have come together, that, that are a family, that have trust and respect for each other um, and aren't afraid to, to, you know, say good or bad things about the other person, you know? Sure. Uh, that it is, was, uh, it was strong. Man. That is awesome. And you know, the, the reason the paving industry has grabbed me so much is you, you had referenced something earlier that, you know, you're transport, you're transporting rocks, you know, this isn't, 
this isn't a hard thing to learn as far as the basics. And so by starting with seal code or even from nothing, it has to be one of the industries where maybe if you yourself have those, those 10 things that require zero effort down and, you know, entrepreneurship is something that interests you. You know, I think the fact that you can have a team of people around you, and this has taken years for you to get these people, you know, to the point you are not that there's, you know, obviously there's, you're going to grow some more and there's going to be room for figure this out too. Mm -hmm. Years to figure this out. Sure. And, you know, we're, we're going to definitely have an entire episode based on reviewing peer reviews. I mean, that, that's just a subject that I have 10 more questions about. Uh, I do want to get to um, the, the, like not the office side, but just handling incoming leads when you started and then we'll start to wrap up. But uh, I do, I do just, want to reiterate that that is something that that truly I, truly fascinates me about the the artistry and, and by artistry. the way we, we go ahead i'm sorry no no go ahead i was saying i was saying by the way we do um we do all we do well we do most we do most of our hiring in that fashion now or we will um you know myself or um you know another manager um uh, May, may do some of the initial interview, you know, kind of stuff, kind of pre-qualification stuff, but then we'll give it to, to the crew to, to kind of make the final call. And we do, we do 95% of our field firing um, in a peer setting, almost, almost in like a vote kind of setting. Wow. Um, it's not, it's not up to me. I don't, they don't, they don't work with me. They work, they may work for me, but they're, they're not with me. 12, 14, 15 hours a day. They're with those seven other guys. So it's, it's up to them whether they get to stay, whether they get another shot. And oh, by the way, if you get another shot, here's what it needs to look like. Or we've given you all the shots and, you know, it's, it's time to move on. So we, um, yeah, we've got quite yeah. a few episode, episode topics. Oh, coming dude. Out of this I mean, first we, one alone. it's, uh, that's what I'm saying. Like, um, but it's, it's way, it's way more than uh, about blacktop here at ADC, baby. I mean, it's sure. trying to flip the script, trying to change the game, brother. I hear you. Anyway. Yeah, no, there's an opportunity there. Um, but I do want to get back to yeah. um, about the incoming leads uh, when you started at ADC. So uh, you obviously, you, they had some infrastructure there in place, but what was it like? So, you know, you're, you've got your company going, uh, you're, you're getting some incoming calls, you know, whether you work from the paver or not, um, what is the process, what was the process like when you first started at ADC and then, you know, what maybe is that, that right time to start to look for someone else? I know some people are really good at working from their phone in the field, um, but just what are some general thoughts about handling the process, uh, having someone else potentially handle the process of incoming leads? Well, I mean, it's, um, <clears throat> geez, I mean, in, in the early day, I mean, even up until the last handful of years, I mean, um, like I said, not, none, none of our really big changes um, really started happening. And, and there, there was an aha moment. There was a, there's actually an employee we let go that basically changed my entire mentality of how I think about culture but that's again another whole episode it was it was basically my epiphany as a leader and as a business owner but um i mean shoot back in the day um and he like i said even up, up until the last three four years i mean anytime that phone would ring like we're we were responding like any 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 lead was a good lead uh, mm-hmm. any job was a good job we were uh, no matter if it was a two hundred fifty dollars steel cutting job or a uh, you know hundred thousand dollar parking lot, we were we were going to look at it. We were spending our time, we were spending our fuel, we were spending our resources uh, to physically send someone out to look at that, uh, to evaluate it, to meet with the customer. Yeah. Um, so we were you know basically anything inbound, we were we were responding to it, um, and. You know, it uh, kind of come to find out, you know, as as you get more and more experience and wisdom in this industry and really start to understand 
uh, profit margins and efficiencies and logistics and, you know, really diving into your operations, um, you know, that there, there, you really start making uh, money in this industry when you start learning how to tell people no. When you start being able to walk away from, you know, no bad jobs, right? And no bad job. I mean, don't you know? We don't even need. We don't even need to send a salesperson to go look at a bad job. We try to, we try to pre-qualify enough. We have enough history and data and experience now under our belts to be able to, <clears throat> on the phone within a minute, minute you know, 60 seconds, 60, 90 seconds, uh, determine whether that customer is a good fit for our business. Uh, and it's okay to tell people, no, I mean, just, just because they're not a good fit for our business doesn't mean, you know, they don't have a need and there's not another contractor out there that can serve them, but it's, we don't have to save the world. We don't have to be the Superman for all payment needs, right? Sure. We need to find customers that align with our values that align with our pricing, that align with our crew's capabilities, capacity, capacities with our equipment's capabilities and capacities. Um, you know, what logistically makes sense, you know, where, where can our trucks, equipment, trailers get into and out of easily? I mean, there's all, again, there are so many episodes. There are so many things we need to dive into, Phil. It's, uh, it's ridiculous. Like this podcast could go on for probably eternity. Yes. Honestly. Yeah. We could speak for three um, or four hours on this one alone. I know if we just went with what yeah, we're I mean, thinking right near. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's ridiculous. Um, and, and that's, that's why, I mean, that's why, let me, let's face it, Phil. I mean, that's why we got to this point that we've been talking about for the last year or so. It's like, we need, there is a need. Our industry need, needs this service. We, sure. we have, we have a duty to share what we have learned and acquired and gained uh, through the hard, hard lessons of our own sure. back to this industry to expedite this process for people, yeah. right? So um, this stuff is available. It's available. And we're, yeah. we're going to start offering that to people. Yeah, um, But yeah, I mean, go, to answer the question, uh, incoming leads, um, we used to field every one of them, uh, every single one of them. And now today, <clears throat> and, and we we've even you know it all goes to customer experience like how is so we the person that answers our phone here at adc kimberly who is i mean amazing and, and you got to think about this folks the, the person answering that phone the very first time a customer calls your business that is the very first impression um that they get every business so her job title is director of first impressions because customer experience starts right then and there as soon as she, and it's it starts in the way she says adc paving when she answers the phone yeah how is she how is she saying our name when people call us and she it starts right that second so sure. if you don't think that's important then you are uh, critically mistaken yeah um, she has a she's has a very professional tone and uh, very kind and huge... super patient <laughs> Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. I mean, she is, she, I mean, with, without her, without that person, we or any other business probably would lose 25% of the business. How sure. does she, how, do, how does she, or how does that person for your company? And it, it may even be you, if you're small, you may be answering a you know, cell phone and you might be the one seal coat and you might be doing all of it. What is that experience? What is that interaction that person is getting in the first 15 seconds of their experience with your company. Sure. They're, they're going to know right away whether um, they're going to want to do business with you or not. They may, you, you know, Kimberly may not close the deal uh, on that first phone call, but she's, uh, she's definitely she giving it. us a leg up. <laughs> she, yeah, she can end it. Like, you know, I mean, think about it. when you call, you call any retailer, you call, anybody and ask, Hey, do you guys carry? Um, I called somebody the other day, asking if they carried safety glasses. We're, gonna, we're on a job. We need some safety glasses. And the first company I called, they had safety glasses, but the way that person handled me on the phone, that I was a huge inconvenience and pain in their ass. Sure. You'd be curious if they had safety glasses. I called, I was like, Nope. And they were, they were 0. 0.3 miles from our job site and we had an inspector coming in 20 minutes. I needed yeah. those safety glasses now. Yeah. I called someone else and drove 
and barely made it back in time for the inspector because I was, I wasn't going to give them our business. Yeah. That no. That's you wanted to do business with so. someone who wanted to do business with you. I think that's a pretty basic lesson. Yeah. And I got to say, coming from yeah. the marketing angle, which I'm excited to dive into soon, but when you talked about, um, you know, picking the right size, knowing the right size job for you, you know, it's always not the biggest job that is what's right for you. The one that's the most money, but knowing what you're good at and then like growing from there. I mean, that's also a part of marketing that I'd never even thought about until I got into it. It's not necessarily like advertising. It's not um, about getting in front of people first. It's about finding the different markets in your area and just understanding what it is that you do. And then, and then what that next step is as a company. And I think that's, um, if you can, if you know your wheelhouse, you can grow patiently and still grow in a a very good fashion while raising brand awareness. Um, So I do just want to kind of uh, wrap this up here. Is there anything else maybe as far as organization, you know, uh, if things go well, or even if you just start off hectic as can be like, is there anything uh, that you wish you had done or knew uh, when you had started just to keep things a little bit more organized and start that kind of (laughs) <laughs> those thoughts of sanity instead of just trying to to put on a different hat every single second of the day man um one thing i wish i knew I, well i think it's i want to i want to say something that about you were just talking about you know it's not always about the job size funny funny story our first our very first six-figure job that we uh, got under contract which was actually the uh 840 WHAS uh, facility over here, literally two minutes from our shop. So like should have been a piece of cake, Bree, first six figure job we ever landed. Um, mm-hmm. We actually lost $600 on it. And it was the hardest job we had, like it was ridiculous. So hey, I mean, wrong size job, wrong equipment, wrong crew, you know, just I wrong. wasn't a good fit for who we were at that time. Like, oh my God, we just landed a six figure job. Yeah. Yeah. You told me that that's one of your, your biggest um, goals is for people that have worked all year to get, not to get to the end of the year when they have to, because of whatever restrictions, most likely weather kind of uh, call it quits for a few months or something like that. And then there's, there's not enough yeah. there at the bottom line. And that has no to money. be uh, every bit as hard as doing a huge job and losing money. This 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 industry has it has zero. I assume most industry has zero. Has very little unless you know unless you've got stuff you need to, uh, you know, be able to show your accountant or the bank or you know whoever you know just you know show some financial strength. Um, I mean, it's, and we'll get. This is another time. Like it has nothing to do nothing to do with revenue. It has nothing to do with sales. It's what's what's left over. What what's happening between here and here? Sure. This is where this is where it's at. And this is where this is where we need to teach people what's happening. This that's where, you know, it, it's it's all about gross margin. Um, so you know, that job, you know, we did a hundred thousand dollar job, like, oh my God, it looks awesome on paper. Sure. But it cost us six hundred dollars to go do that. Sure. So, you know what I mean? It's, yeah. Um, you're, you're going around telling people you ridiculous. sold a six figure job and then you walk away with nothing. Well, I told everybody, <laughs> I told everybody. I didn't tell anybody yeah, what we made. Yeah. yeah. You know, six hundred thousand dollar job gross profit should be at, you know, the way we operate should be at least uh, 35 to $40,000. Sure. Spent 600. <laughs> yeah. Well, I know. Um, let's, let's get people there. Uh, yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah. That, let's eliminate those lessons. Let's eliminate because you do too much of that. It's you're gonna you're gonna run yourself uh, into bankruptcy. Is what's gonna happen, literally. Um, I don't know. One thing, one thing that I wish I knew starting you know early was um. Well, you you do have something that would have kept me more organized. Yeah, just as far as staying organized on the on the job not knowing the industry, you know, just getting either starting off or just something you wish you had started earlier. Yeah. I, I, th- I think it would be, um, I think it would be my education, like just, just education, just educating myself, um, empowering myself, you know, giving myself as much information as I could instead of relying, <clears throat> you know, relying on, um, 
you know, relying on the, this crew of people I had to, you know, you know, taking their word that they were teaching me the, the proper techniques and, uh, and relying that the way my aunt's business ran was how it was supposed to be done. Right. So just, sure. uh, I wish I would have put myself around mentors, teachers, um, sooner. Now I did that pretty soon in my career, pretty early on in my career. Um, <clears throat> but even when I did that, I wish I would have coupled it more with, um, really diving into educating myself at the same time, because if I would have done that in conjunction with my mentorship, uh, we'd, we'd probably be a couple more years ahead of the game than we are now, even now. So, sure. You know, um, yeah, that is yeah. the perfectly. And, and then, and it's staying, staying organized in itself is a big one. Like there's so many, uh, young, you know, young contract, not young by age. I mean, and it could be young by age, but, uh, young, young by years in business or whatever that, and, uh, you know, contractors were so guilty of this. You dream, you ever go like Home Depot or Lowe's and you see like the, the, the dirty truck that's got like receipts and invoices and crap, like all laid over the dash of their truck. They don't know if they're making money. They don't have a, they don't have a clue. They think they're making money because they're out working every day and, oh, customers giving them $500 cash here. And here's the fact, you know, they think they're doing well. Um, <clears throat> they don't have a clue. So sure. Actually, get or, getting organized is uh, one in itself. You know, so finding your systems, it's yeah, taking time to work system, on it. Yes, fine. correct. Take yes, take time to establish uh, your systems and processes, no matter how big or small you are. Um, and we find that every year here at ADC, as we continue to grow, um, if we don't have, and we we felt it this year when we doubled revenue. Um, <clears throat> excuse me we we didn't we didn't necessarily have the systems in place to support that growth right so it was an on the fly evolution um of systems processes sure it can't and, and we've been we're guilty that we rely on the winter months like okay we're gonna we're gonna regroup and reboot and get ready for next year um it's it's too late i guess to, you gotta you gotta do it now you gotta do it while you're, you gotta do it now Sure. Sure. Do the research. And um, yeah, yeah, there's plenty of different softwares and ways to do it now. You know, I think if this were 20 years ago, this advice might have been a lot more pertinent as far as the actual steps to take. But there's a lot of organi organizational things out there that can help you out. But I do want to go ahead. No and, reason. Uh, yeah, get it. I do want to go ahead and wrap up, though, uh, with our final segment that we're going to have every week. And that's just the thought that won't stop. And that is a reoccurring business, personal or leadership thought that you are curious about that has helped you often in the past or that just won't leave you alone. And so Kevin, do you have a thought that won't stop just that nagging thought that is in your brain and keeps popping up? I, I mean, I do have something that's been, <clears throat> yeah, I have, a, I have kind of a common theme for this week. Um, I do. And it's, you know, we've made, um, we've made some really, I don't even know the word to use. We've made some incredible, kind of, you know, once in a life, once in a career, once in a lifetime, and just to land, to land one of these kind of people for your organization would have been kind of a once in a, a career kind of hire, and we've landed four of them um, in the past couple of weeks, um, and I'm sitting here, and I, I, I talked to my therapist about this yesterday, and yes, I do have a therapist, because that is some powerful shit. If you're a business owner, um, uh, leader, manager, whatever, and you've got, you know, a busy, hectic, stressful, um, man, line it up with a good therapist, even if it's just somebody you can shut the door and talk to for 50 minutes to, to slow your mind down. I highly recommend that shit. Um, but um, so, yeah, with, I've had to remind my, remind myself with, with the hires we've just made, uh, cause I'm putting a lot of pressure on myself. Like my, my initial thought was like, holy cow, this is going to be, this is going to be amazing. It's going to be awesome. And it is, it is going to be amazing and awesome. But then I'm like, holy shit, this is, gonna be, this is a lot of pressure. Like, sure. don't screw, like, don't screw this up, Kev. Like, don't, don't screw it up. Um, this is, this is a once in a career shot. Uh, not only with one guy, but with four of them. Yep. So it's like, it's like, wait a minute, wait a minute. You got this, you know, get, Give yourself some grace. So I think my thought that won't stop right now is giving myself grace, um, reminding myself that 
ADC that we that we are worthy. We are good enough. We have paid the dues. Um, we are deserving of this, right? Like, so it's just giving myself grace, giving myself uh, and our, you know, just giving us uh, the grace that it's okay that this is happening. Like, it doesn't need to be a lot of pressure. Um, there is, there is a reason that uh, there's a reason that they are coming here. They could have gone anywhere in the country, literally anywhere in the country. Um, and the fact that uh, a few of them have spent just a couple hours around uh, myself and our business um, is a true testament to uh, who we are, who we have become. Um, and I'm very, I'm very proud of that. I mean, it's, it's been a 10, 11, 12 year grind to get to where we're at today. And they're not coming because of who we are as a paving contractor. They're coming uh, because of who we are as people. Sure. Right. Yeah, you don't move um, what we had. 20 we had one of the away. gentlemen. What's that? You don't move from what twenty hours away, twenty four hours now away they're, to they're if you don't believe in the company. They're relocating twenty hours. A couple of them have never left the state that they're currently living in. That's um, amazing, Kev. I look, you know, one of the guys sat sat in our peer review the other day, and he came up afterwards and said, "You guys are you guys are the real deal." He said, "You guys are the real deal," and this. This guy is, he's paved hundreds of miles of interstate and it like hundred, like he could teach, he could teach the, he could teach anybody in this country how to, how to pave literally. And wow. he said, you guys are the real deal. And he wasn't talking about our paving operation. He was talking about our culture. He was talking about our people. He was talking about our brotherhood. Um, and that's not, that's not me. That's not just me. That's, that's every one of these folks out here. Uh, that believe in it, that live by it, that exemplify it, that made him, that made him feel that he felt it, right? Sure, he, he believed felt what you that believe. in his, yeah. So, yeah, I'm, uh, I'm giving myself and our entire organization the grace and um, kind of the congratulations that, that yeah. We're, we're deserving of everything that's happening to us. Yeah, that's that's extremely. How about you, man? What? Yeah, I think that just What's in, your in wrapping of the week? in wrapping up for for you real quick. You know, this is the end of the year, and so naturally there's a sense of relief. Relief, but to have your crew in one of the hardest industries in America, you know, be celebrating each other and uh, being excited. You know, you all have decided to take on work for for more time. You're not going right into a break, so it's not just a break, but to still be celebrating each other is awesome. Uh, so yeah, congratulations. Cause I have seen that firsthand over the last three or four years, um, what this has grown into, but my thought that won't stop. Um, it's more like a, a thought that hopefully will stop now that I've analyzed it. Um, but it, it has to do with the mornings and that's what is the simplest way for me to think about the upcoming day in the morning. Uh, I'm, I'm naturally a very anxious person. And I feel like even with the systems I put in place and I know the night before what my morning is supposed to look like, I know what I'm going to look like, what I'm going to look at in the morning to remind myself what I'm supposed to be doing. I still have to, uh, I still have, you know, that fear in the morning that I'm not doing enough, especially once I started owning my own business, you know, you want to maximize your time, um, and really think about how is my time best spent today? You know, a lot of us at the end of the day will be like, what just happened? It flies by. And I think um, at the end of the day, you just don't want to look back and be like, wow, that was a waste of time. That was pointless or not, not often anyways. Of course, you learn something that's valuable, yeah. but just a pointless waste of time. So um, basically, I'm like, what can I concentrate on the morning? And after finally diving into it because of this podcast, which is nice, uh, I think effort, work ethic and sanity are the three things I'm mm -hmm. just going to look at in the morning other than what's on my list. Um, with effort, I've kind of learned that uh, there comes the understanding of of what you're doing, you know, putting that time into understanding your craft, but also putting the effort into educating yourself. Um, and then when it comes down to the work ethic, um, if you have a work ethic, you tend to um, can you can stretch yourself, you know, you can put in the time, but then spend the time educating yourself. You know, it's not just it's not just about doing a good job that day. It's setting yourself up for tomorrow. And then kind of the other stuff is just sanity. You know, there's there's the people we love. There's the things that we need to do in our day to, to keep balanced. And 
don't get me wrong. I am not in the paving industry uh, or I don't own a paving company. I'm in the paving industry, whether you all like it or not. But I know that that 16 hours working in the field is very different than 16 hours working in the office. But either way, you know, like if you've been working for two and a half, three hours and all of a sudden you look up and you're like, what just happened? And you haven't given one thought about yourself, you know, that sanity aspect really kind of comes in and to just learning what, what helps you get through the day and really kind of fuels you to go back into effort and work ethic. So for me, it's just uh, what I'm going to kind of concentrate on and see if, if this works is maybe whether you call it a meditation or just some, some time and thought in the morning, I'm just going to concentrate on making sure I give a little effort every day, making sure my work ethic is on point and uh, try to stay sane. Tell my, tell my wife, I love her, you know, think about the kiddo on the way, uh, take a hike or something yeah. and, um, and try to try to keep on going because this is the most exciting time in life. And honestly, those three things tell, tell me a lot about what I look for in, in other business partners as well. That's awesome, dude. That makes me uh, I was smiling ear to ear inside, brother. Yeah, man, this whole, this whole, this whole idea, this whole company that you and I've put together has really given, given a lot of purpose behind the education. So Kevin, I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm excited to, to get on with this. Give the people some, some long time coming, dude. Like it's, yeah. And you, I mean, you can feel it here in just these first couple episodes, you know, the, the, the purpose, uh, the purpose that this is put inside of us, the purpose was there, but now, now we're getting, uh, we have a platform to be able to share it and unleash it. And that's, that's one of the most powerful things in, uh, in humankind, I think, is when people can actually act out the purpose that's inside of them. Like that's, that's living brother. That's, that's living. I tell you, man, I uh, couldn't be more excited, but I tell you what, we're going to save some of that excitement for next episode. So in closing here, I uh, just wanted to let you know that the next two episodes will cover uh, culture and marketing. And uh, we have quite a few sources where we've gotten these questions, including the paving industry report, which you will find through our avenues that we are on. Uh, speaking of avenues we are on, we're still establishing quite a few. But if you want to reach out to us now, please get on Instagram and uh, and message us at underscore pave it forward. That's at underscore underscore pave it forward. We will be releasing episodes on Wednesdays and Thursdays and be on all platforms soon enough. So go ahead and subscribe if you'd like. And Kevin and I will catch you on the next episode and where we look to, what do we do, Kevin? Let's find it here. Where we look to help leaders in the paving industry who are looking to run more efficiently, meet their ideal customer and improve the lives of those around them through meaningful work. This has been the Pave It Forward podcast. Thanks for listening.